Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, welcome to the back office. I was just filming a video about my ozone generator um, that I bought and you might have seen the previous video on um, because I had this great idea of using it to destroy PCBs because I assumed PCBs would be very similar to this sort of whatever this is, this material. It sounds kind of glassy and it's got like a PCB etchy type pattern on it, but no, nope, alas, I wasted a lot of time, spent 30 minutes recording and I've just deleted it all because it was pointless. I even had a plexiglass shield to stop myself burning my eyeballs out. So what I'm gonna do now instead, I was just sort of looking at these and these are HT leads and what I wonder is, I'm just gonna to try to bring them close together and see if there's a point where I actually get an arc. Um, and then if I don't, you know, I, I clearly really am missing a lot. I really just don't understand what I'm dealing with here. Um, this is quite dangerous. Remember, this is mains and it is high tension and it's potentially enough to give you a, a jolt or worse. I don't really know. Just don't do it. I'm doing it so you don't have to. Okay. Right. So have a look here. So I've got the first high tension wire in this grippy thing and I've lost the other one, which is kind of annoying. So... You know, I'm gonna see if I can just pinch it. Oh, it's nicely pinched here, right? So, could be a bit nicer pinched, but it's not, doesn't matter for us. And what we're going to do, we're going to try to get a nice gap between these two things here. And I'm gonna switch to a manual focus because we're gonna need some control over this when we're playing with it, okay. So I'm going to try to get them within a mil or so of each other, which is about that. That's about a millimeter. Let's turn the lights off, plug it in. I'm just going to check it's definitely not touching. Ready? Oh yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I don't think I can focus, unfortunately, on that level for you, but let's let's see what we can achieve. You can definitely see some serious arc going on there. So I've got I've got really no idea why that didn't work on a PCB, um, but maybe the uh, spark gap is is really critical. Right, so that's pretty much an arc. <laughs> Actually, the what the wires and everything are really quite hot. It's obviously a lot of energy there. I've opened up the gap now. I've made it double the. Whoa, that's double the gap. Great. Sheesh, that's like five mil now. Okay, that's nearly a centimeter. So you can see it arcing back on itself at that point. There's that's the point where the it's actually arcing back and then through the metal work of this. If you're not careful, it'll burn through its insulation. And then Hey, this is dangerous stuff. Don't mess with this. Oh, what what things I could make. Now, I do have a lot of old games consoles here, so I'm wondering what will happen if I solder them onto the port of one of them. Uh, they are working, and a lot of my t previous tests show that on PCBs and stuff, it didn't actually affect it. Dare I do this on a, a working games console? Uh, yeah, I think I kind of want to. Let me find one. Here I have the legendary Sega Dreamcast. It's going to take me a little while to set this up because I uh, haven't used it for a while with all these gadgets and wires and things to put, to put it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up here and hook it up to my PC to capture the screen so we can see what's happening on the screen while it's loading. So the idea is, excuse me, I'm just picking up all the junk. I can 
do that later, couldn't I? Right, the idea is that I'm going to choose... Ah, how about the power port? That would be really super easy to hook it up to that. Well, actually, if I hook it up on the power points, I can't bloody run it, can I? Um, we've got a lot of options here. We've got serial port, the AV out ports. We've got the line. Well, we'll be using the AV. I think I should try just to get it in the serial port, unless what's behind this? Oh, this is the interface for the this modem. Oh, there's loads of things here on this extension bus. So what I can do is I'll literally just, I'm gonna wedge it in here, and I'm gonna put a bit of insulator, because I don't want it to, to, to touch the grounding. So I've got, I'm gonna get a bit of capped on tape and put it in there, and just wedge it in really. A couple of random places, we'll turn it all on. And we'll see what it's doing. So give me a moment just to hook that up. Okay, this is very tense. We've got the Sega Dreamcast running right now. This video is being streamed to my other PC just over there. Um, for some reason, I've got a ladybird here on the controller, interestingly enough. Uh, the HT leads are now connected into that port. They've got this um, pliers sitting on them just to stop them from wobbling out. I don't want them to move around. So very much precariously perched and we've got some capped on tape acting as an insulator. That's connected up to a secondary mains point which I have access to over here. I'm not going to switch this without this in front of me because although I'm 100% confident nothing bad will happen, safety first. <sighs> Ready, three, two, one. Oops. What? Um... Yeah, uh... Okay... <laughs> it's still running, that's weird. Should we try one more time? I... Um... Well, the Dreamcast is off. It's gone off. <sighs> Sorry. Sorry, Dreamcast cat fans. Um, does anyone have a spare one? Send me. I've got a few games I haven't played yet. Uh, please feel free to comment down below. Uh, click subscribe. Don't try this at home. Um, as ever. Thanks for watching.